Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the Reality of Real Estate podcast. I am one of your hosts, Christopher Lynch, and welcome my co-host. Hey everybody, my name is Brianna Lehman. We give you a real take on making homeownership attainable. We will be breaking down real life scenarios, trends in the current market, and giving you our personal tools to make homeownership not just your dream, but your reality. Get ready to be inspired, motivated, and ready to take action towards building your own empire. Because when you invest in real estate, you aren't just purchasing a home, you're investing in your future. Ready, set, go. Hi, guys. Ready. We're here again. Yes, we're back. We're back. Um, so in this episode, we kind of just want to talk to you guys about different down payment assistance options. Yes. Um, and I always get the question of, hey, like I want a first time home buyer loan. Well, mm-hmm. that could be a lot of different things. Yeah. And um, they change all the time. Yes. Right? And so just to kind of break things down. So as a first time home buyer, the biggest perk of being a first time home buyer, in my opinion, is that if you are a conventional buyer, your minimum down payment is going to be 3% of your agreed purchase price. Mm-hmm. So that is just right off the rip, that is your perk as a first time home buyer conventionally. FHA, the down payment, whether it's your first time buying, second, third, fourth, fifth, if you're an FHA buyer, it's always going to be three and a half percent unless they change that requirement. Mm-hmm. Um, USDA, it's always going to be no down payment. You just have closing costs and you need to make sure that you fit into their income limits based upon your household size. Mm-hmm. And that is a good thing to mention for USDA. USDA actually goes off of your household income, not whoever is on the loan. Mm-hmm. So if you are, you know, we'll just say here, husband, wife, mm-hmm. two teenagers, everyone works. It goes off of everybody. Every, everyone's income is being taken into consideration not to approve you, but it is only going to go off of whoever is on the loan. So if that's just mom and dad, then mom and dad's income is going to be taken into consideration. But if both teenagers work part time and they've been doing it consistently, that income is taken into consideration. What if you're not married? Same way. All of it's taken into Whoever consideration is in the house. Yep. So you fill out a occupancy letter mm-hmm. um, and who's going to live in the property with you. So you complete that. And then it'll ask you if they work and ask you what their income is. Um, And then we'll get pay stubs, W-2s, or like sometimes we have to do an employment verification. For everybody, even if they're not on the Mm -hmm. loan? Okay. Yeah, because... That's interesting. I didn't realize that, the the VOE part, but I knew the household size and that stuff. I mean, unfortunately, as we know, people don't always tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And so (laughs) if... You're just like, hey, it's going to be, you know, Bobby and Sally, sure. But then it's just like, nope, Sally doesn't work. Yeah. And we look at any other documents that would prove Sally works. Yeah. Then you have to take that into consideration. Um, And so, yeah, but I just think that that's very key to know. Mm -hmm. If you are a VA buyer, then you're not going to have a down payment you would have closing costs. So with the VA buyer, let me ask you for CCM, it used to be that the sellers had to pay for a pest inspection. VA still requires a pest inspection to be done, correct? Mm -hmm. Does it have to be paid by the seller for CCM? Because I've had some lenders who are like, we don't care who pays for it as long as it's completed and clear. And then I've had lenders recently that are like, hey, the buyer cannot pay for this. The invoice has to be in the seller's name. Kind of goes off topic, but it's just something as we're talking about VA. Legally, I ain't answering that question. I plead the fifth. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like, Um, wait, what? Does it really matter? I guess as long as it's done and clear. I don't think that you can't tell someone legally Mm -hmm. that they can't do something. Same way back to like 2019, 2020, 2021, Mm -hmm. where you had buyers who were paying the seller's cost and paying, you know, for 
sellers moving expenses. Yeah, it just and, isn't the norm, I guess. And so I do feel like regardless of whoever pays for it, it's mm -hmm. always made out to the seller. And I don't know if it's just like the inspectors are aware of that, like mm -hmm. how it normally is. And that's yeah, how they I put it. It just depends because um, mine it doesn't. But okay. But truthfully, all we care about is that you have to get a paid invoice or you have mm -hmm. to get an invoice for it to be paid at closing. Right. Okay. So, so but yeah. Like, and what's required. That's how I look at it. Okay. Um, but then going back to, you know, hey, I want a first time home buyer loan. Mm -hmm. Again, it just really depends on what makes most sense for you. Um, but like if you are someone who needs down payment assistance, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to rattle off some CCM. We do have internal down payment assistance programs. Um, and like we offer a hundred dollar down HUD, um, op option. Um, and so like you won't think like, your down payment is a hundred dollars technically. What do you have to do to qualify for that? It is, well, one, it has to be like a HUD approved, like HUD has to be selling yeah. the house. Okay. Um, so that's only for HUD homes. Yes. Okay. Only for HUD homes. There's also like. Um, Which is what you had talked about in a previous episode yeah. with that buyer who yeah. has and so she, much equity. And, and she closed and it was like. Oh, I'm excited for her and I don't even know her. Yeah. like I'm going to look at HUD homes. That I mean, why not? It, it's just like to where she bought this house. Mm -hmm. It just never happens that way. Yeah. And cool. yeah, I just actually talked to her yesterday and she was like, I can't wait to have like my first um, party because I'm going to invite you and your family. And I'm like, well, you live like now, like right five, seven road, minutes right. from me. So that is very doable. Um, so there's that. We also have a um, it's called Smart Start, but basically mm -hmm. it's through Freddie and Fanny to where. It is a grant, but they will give 2% up to $4,000 of your purchase price. Okay. So if, for an example, if it's at $200,000, they're giving you $4,000 to go towards your down payment or closing cost. Okay. Um, if something that also just came out is if you are 50% under the area um, median income, you can actually get up to, on conventional loans only, um, up to like an additional twenty five hundred dollars. So, in some cases, if you are doing that, I mean, you could easily get we'll just call it sixty five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so you have that out there, and then we also have uh, what is our other internal one? It's also a grant, but it's through Freddie and Fannie um, to where like they give you a percentage, mm -hmm. um, and then you have. One of my favorites when they have money, but they don't always have money. And that's mm -hmm. Communities First. They're based out of Cincinnati. And they give you a percentage of your loan amount. So it's not based upon your purchase price. So sometimes you have to kind of know what we're working with. But you can't mm -hmm. pair it with, um, like, I can't use that and, like, Canton's program. Okay. So, like, you can't use the so two together. how do you qualify for that, the Community First? Communities First is it will do... FHA, USDA, VA, and conventional, mm -hmm. um, but you have to go off of their interest rates. It's service through U.S. Bank, um, but it is, like I said, they're based out of Cincinnati, and they give you a percentage of the loan amount. So right now, as of this week, they only had it available for um, FHA, USDA, and VA, and mm -hmm. it is 3% of your loan amount. But the rate for it was at 8.125%. And so then it's just like, hey, you're only going with that option if it's like end all be all. Like right. this actually is what <clears throat> needs to happen because mm -hmm. you as a buyer, you don't have the funds, but you also don't have the credit score, debt to income ratio to allow us to go with a different program. Okay. Why it's one of my favorites is just because they're more consumer friendly. Mm -hmm. And so like if you have a 620 credit score and – you can even do like a manual underwrite with them. And so like, it's just great. Um, and it doesn't require repayment. Everything I've mentioned so far, you don't have to pay it back. Okay. Um, then we have a few others. There's one through Essex, which it does require repayment. They have another one through Chinoa, 
and they also require repayment. Mm -hmm. And Essex will give you the, for FHA loans, they'll give you the three and a half percent down as a second lien against the property. Um, and on a 10 year repayment plan. So their interest rate is always going to be 2% higher than whatever your fixed rate is on your first mortgage. So if you are buying a house and like the first lien, your normal mortgage payment is at a 6.75% interest rate. Just know that mm -hmm. on your three and a half percent down payment that you're paying back, that's at 8.75. Um, Chinoa is the same way, but Chinoa gives you three and a half percent towards a down payment and cost or 5%. They do have a forgivable option, but the rates on those are even higher. So what is like the criteria that you need to do down payment assistance as a whole? Like, obviously there's all these different options for a reason, but like, for example, so, my sister, like, so, okay. So she, she, she is, used yeah. OFA. Okay. Um, and that's Ohio finance, um, housing agency. Mm -hmm. And, they are one of the larger ones okay. and like they never run out of money. Mm -hmm. So if someone tells you that they ran out of money, double check it um, <laughs> because they just, they don't. Um, and they've been around for a long time. Their requirements are, they want you to have basically a 650 credit score. Mm -hmm. If you are 650 to 679, your debt to income ratio, including your mortgage payment has to be under a 45 back okay. end. Um, and then they have three options for you if you are a first time home buyer to where if it's no assistance, they have a market rate, they charge you 1% origination, mm -hmm. um, but their rates with no assistance can typically be lower than whatever the market rate is for that right. time. Um, then they can give you two and a half percent towards your cost and everything but in reality because they charge you that one percent you're really getting one and a half yeah um or they'll go up to five and then again but you're really getting four because right. like they're taking their one percent origination out of what they're giving you right um but then if you are 680 or higher credit score wise your back end debt to income ratio can go up to a 50 percent but they have a it's called your choice and which you just have to be a first time home buyer. That can be FHA, VA, USDA, or conventional. Mm -hmm. Rates are gonna be different between those. Um, or they have grants for grads. They do give you a break on that just because like you just recently graduated right. from college. Um, and then they have the Ohio Heroes, which is really big for mm -hmm. teachers, doctors, yeah. um, nurses, fire, and right? fire, yep, firefighters. Officers. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's huge just because they don't always get the recognition that they need. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And so on all levels. And so like they give you a break on your interest rate. Um, and they also like just help you out with the assistance that you right. would need to help put you into a home. The majority of the people that I would use it for um, and have used it for are nurses. Mm -hmm. That's who usually yeah. fall into that category and they want to take advantage of the Ohio heroes. Um, and grants for grads, it's good if it makes sense for you. But if you are someone who is getting ready to graduate or mm -hmm. just recently graduated, then take advantage of it if you have the opportunity to qualify. Right. Um, and like I said, you can do them for any loan type. The additional perk for them is that you can also get a certain percentage on your next home. So it's not as much. But let's just say here you are a current homeowner mm -hmm. and life has happened. Yeah. You need to sell your house. You're not going to make a ton of money and you want to buy. You don't want to rent, but you need to be able to get into a, a new property because you have to completely restructure your life. Mm -hmm. They will give you a percentage and it typically is like it's 2%. But then like if you have some money that you're going to walk away with, it'll allow for you to still be able to move forward and buy mm -hmm. your next house. Um, their biggest things are if you refinance or sell your property within the first seven years of owning it, you do pay it back. Mm -hmm. um, that is the catch 22 to yeah. their program. Um, but ultimately, like 
because they never run out of money, it's not free. Um, right. But if you don't refinance or sell your house mm -hmm. after that seven years, the lien gets released and you don't have to pay it back. So you're in a position where you can refinance, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so that's good for that one. Um, and then another one or two more are Canton's program yeah, and Massa. Yeah. Canton's program is income driven. Mm -hmm. And you also have to buy within the city limits of Canton. Right. But it could be plain schools as long as it's Canton City. city. Yes. yes. Okay. But or once like you, Canton local schools as long well yes. as Canton City. Okay. They will tell you, you do meet with them to get yourself like, you know, you can have a consultation with me. I'll get you pre-approved mm -hmm. because after you apply with them, they want to see your pre-approval letter. Right. Same way with Maslin. But then at that point in time, once they get your pre-approval letter and you have to be a first-time home buyer, they will then confirm or deny if you qualify. Mm -hmm. What uh, are their qualifications? It's income and it's lower. Yeah. Like they, most of my clients don't end up qualifying for Canton City's program. Yeah, I've had maybe one or two, but it is a little more difficult, I would say, than Maslin's. Which, yes. Mm -hmm. Maslin's is a little bit more consumer friendly because mm -hmm. Canton's program will give you up to $5,000. Mm -hmm. But if you don't need the full five, they're not giving you the full five. Right. So don't go into it expecting the full five. Mm -hmm. They're only going to give you up to five, but they have to be able to approve the final closing disclosure. Mm -hmm. And that is how they determine on, like, we can communicate with them throughout the process, give them, um, like, a preliminary CD, that, those sorts of things. But it goes back and forth because they have to have the final say on how, exactly how much money they're going to give you up mm -hmm. to that five grand. Um, Maslin's, on the other hand, you still have to apply and you have to give them your pre-approval letter. They have to confirm that you are a first-time home buyer. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a situation last year to a young lady who owned a mobile home and it doesn't always happen but it did get converted into real estate mm -hmm. and because it was converted into real estate she no longer qualified, qualified for the program buyer. and you know I saw her perspective is just like, hey, I don't even own the land that this property sits on. Yeah. Um, and so I don't really see how you are considering it this way, but unfortunately she didn't. Mm -hmm. But we still figured it out. She got to buy her house and sh she's happy. And so what on. is the cap for Maslin? How much do they give you? I can't remember. Is it? It. Does it vary? Because it it varies based upon where you fall at in their spectrum. Okay. And so. Like, I've had some people get up to 7%. Okay. That's a lot of That's money. That's a lot of money. So should we get to and put it on, like, just links? Like, here's the information for it for our buyers who are interested. Like, who are the contact people for that? Yeah. Because I haven't used it in either program in a while, to be honest. It's been a few years, so. Yeah, I mean. Or should they just start here and then we direct them as they go? Yes. Yeah. I, I would say that that's easier because, like, if they change something, I don't have to go back and delete and it. And fix it, right, yeah. for sure. Especially if it's not something that, like, if they don't send out an email blast and say, hey, like, we've updated yeah. this, I but wouldn't want to mislead you. But if that is something you are interested in, mm -hmm. let's have the conversation. And then, like I said, they want you to be pre-approved, and then you go to them and apply. Right. And I will say that even as an agent, we've talked about this on here, like, I forget that these programs exist sometimes. So not every time I sell a house in Maslin, Maslin to a first-time buyer, am I like, hey, let's check and see if you qualify for this program. Yep. Not everybody needs it, but even if you don't need it and you can still qualify, why not take advantage of it if you're buying within the city that you want to be Yeah, because it's like that's how I look at, you know, all of these programs, mm -hmm. especially on any of them that don't require repayment because right. if you are – in a position, especially where rates are at right now, home prices, and if you are someone who, let's just say here, pays $1,100 a month for rent, okay, and now you want to buy a house, your mortgage, principal interest taxes and insurance are mm -hmm. going to put you at, we'll call it $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. That is 
more than what you are used to paying for housing. Right. And you save money and you're just like, okay, well, you know, I want to go this route. Um, but because that's more money, like what you're comfortable with and what you're used to, do you a keep an emergency fund? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any debt that would need to be paid off that could help make a difference mm -hmm. on the difference in what you're going to be paying in your housing? Um, or like, do you have any money invested for a retirement? Mm -hmm. Like, are you buying a house that you don't know if it's going to have appliances or not? Or if you're currently renting, you can't take the appliances with you. Right. You're going to have to open up a credit card, you know, to have appliances mm -hmm. where you if to. you don't have to. Right. So it just all kind of ties together of making best use of your money, mm -hmm. but also being smart with it. And if you can qualify for a grant, use the grant if it doesn't stand in your way. Mm -hmm. And like Masson's program and Canton, like neither of them care if you're pre-approved conventionally FHA, US, like it's and very rare. do you have rare. to pay them back? No. Yeah, and then it doesn't change your interest rate like some of these other programs. Yes. So if you can use them, let's use them. Right, and that's how I look at it. And even like the same way with like the like internal ones that we have mm -hmm. for like the smart start. Again, sometimes like for people, if we can, because you only can use those for conventional loans, but mm -hmm. if you don't have to have the like required mortgage insurance, like your PMI, but you qualify for this, let's buy you out of it. Right. Or maybe beforehand, you didn't want to pay any points for an interest rate, but you qualify for this. So now we can use that to, you know, buy your rate down some more. And I hate to say it like, but it's, you know, like free money, but when you qualify for certain things, it doesn't make you less of a person. It doesn't make you, you know, yeah. like you just, you qualify, you qualify, take, take advantage. advantage of it. Yeah, because uh, one day you'll wish that you, you did. did. Yeah. And so like you could go into a house and now you're out of all of your money mm -hmm. because you didn't want to take advantage of something and you have to buy X, Y, and Z, right. you know, you didn't really account for yep. or whatever the case is that was aggressive <laughs> that was <so> <laughs> uh, well i always tell my buyers too like it's less out of pocket right yeah. like okay you don't need closing costs but there's no other offers let's ask for them because you can buy down your rate it's less out of pocket for you for whatever so all right well i feel like this was good like that was a lot of information to digest yeah. there's a lot of programs that are out there that you just have to utilize and know how to get a hold of them. So Yeah, and when we have a consultation call, if you qualify, I'm going to tell you that you qualify for something. Yeah. Or like when I'm looking at where your money is coming from or if mm -hmm. I look at your bank statement and you have several large cash deposits that don't have a real explanation for them. But if we need to pivot and look into something else, I'm going to have that conversation right. with you. You're going to lay um, out all the options. And, and just because, like, one thing that agents always ask is, are you sure they can't go conventional? I promise you, I've explored That would have been an option, yeah. right? And or it doesn't make sense for their situation yeah. or whatever. So, But, yeah, okay, I like cool. this one. Yeah, that was good. Um Definitely something to keep in mind about if you're looking in Canton City or Maslin City and you are a first-time buyer, is there a certain price point? No. Mm -hmm. So it, both of them are off of income. Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. And income and, like, you have to be a first-time home buyer. Right. Right. Um, Always. But. And they do break them down for your household size. So it's, like, one to two, three to four, okay. five, and more. Um, but, yeah, if someone emails – like even if you emailed me or if mm -hmm. you called and you just that's all you want to know about right now. Like I have it saved on my desktop and I can okay. literally just send it right to you. Um, or you can Google Canton City down payment assistance, assistance Maslin um, down payment assistance mm -hmm. program. It'll take you to all the information. Um, and sometimes when it comes to the income. 
that's where it gets into the nitty gritty because they're going to ask you for the, your last 30 days worth of pay stubs mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. But again, they can start the process with you, but they want to make sure before you get too far ahead of yourself that you do qualify for a mortgage and they want to see that before they can give you like a final stamp of approval. Right, right. So just take all of that into consideration, but it never hurts to look up information and just yeah. kind of read it for yourself. For sure. And know that you have options. Yes, so. absolutely. All right. Well, thanks. I know that was a lot for you. A lot it of was. information. But so when Tiff cuts these clips, I'm like, why isn't Brie talking? Uh, well, mm. that's the bread and butter, literally. The money. <laughs> all right. Well, Thank you guys for listening. Of yes. course, as always, reach out to us with any questions or any comments that you have. And we look forward to working with you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Toodles. Toodles. All right, friends. As we close things out today, remember, homeownership is more than just a roof over your head. It's a symbol of your strength, resilience, and determination. Take action, embrace growth, and never be discouraged about where you are in your journey. And remember to follow us on Instagram at Reality of Real Estate Podcast. Our emails are linked in the description below. You can reach us at Christopher.Lynch at CCM.com. And my email is TheLaymanRealtor at gmail.com. All, All right. right. Toodles. Toodles.